morning we are going to spend time interceding for Nigeria, but especially for Northern Nigeria. Amen. Amen. And I'll just read the Bible verse quickly. Romans 8, verse 5 to 7 says, Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or fame or nakedness or danger or sorrow? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. Amen. Amen. We are going to be praying for every ministry, every Christian, every pastor, every evangelist, every apostle, every brother, every sister in northern Nigeria for strength, for encouragement that what they are doing, they do not get tired of it because the promise that Christ has given us is that we are conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are victorious through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Spirit and He serves flames of fire. So many of us will think when scripture says servant is only pastor or those in ministry in church. So far as you're a child of God, you are in the category of servant. Paul speaking to Timothy said, Flap out the flames of the gift of the spirit that has been given to us. And as believers, we know that the greatest gift we have received is the gift of the Holy Ghost. So just 
them no glory to one another. We beholding as a, as a glass, the image of God, are transformed to that very image. We receive a word with gladness in our hearts. Again, through that word that we get to us the praise of your name. We cannot remain the same, but we have come to God and make our heavens and the earth. The God and Lord of our
and partner with God to make it a reality. We are going here on Blessed Memory said that a church that does not emphasize evangelism is a dead church. A believer who is not given to the winning of souls is not alive in Christ. The great evangelist. That's what he said. And it is true because the core of what Christianity represents is the salvation of souls. He said, and I like to quote because he says on this thing, that the church is not created for entertainment. So you don't say this church is boring or not. The church is not created for entertainment. The church is created for the salvation of the souls of men. We do other things to just get men's attention. But those other things are not what is important. The core of what we do is that men are saved. Hallelujah. Jesus corresponds this truth because when he was about to leave the earth and go to heaven, upon his ascension, you know what he did? He says, Go in and make disciples of what? Of all nations. It is a testimony of the fact that this is what is behind all that he's doing. That he ascended, and the last thing he said to them was, Go, make disciples of nations. It is a communication of that fact that the core of our Christian faith is the salvation of men. The apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, they were given so they would equip every one of us. So we will walk the walk of the ministry till what? Till we all become what? The image of that man Jesus. You know, it is fascinating to note that everybody that. When Jesus multiplied 5,000, my five was a two fish, and fed 5,000 people, the people were rejoicing. And they said, Let us make him king. Let us make him king. And they came and said, Show us a sign. Give us bread. Like Moses gave them bread. And what Jesus said, Sir, the bread not out of bread. He refused to give them bread. He refused. Because as much as miracles are important, Miracles are only pointer. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's the call. Now let's go to what we have, essentially, what we're here to discuss today, evangelism by fire. You know, Jesus, after training his disciples for three years, after training them, showing them great signs, Great wonders. He died. He was buried. He resurrected. Even upon his resurrection, the 40 days he lived with them on earth, he was still expounding the mysteries of the kingdom for them. And you have thought, after all that drama, after all that time of training, he would just say, Go, oh, I am going. Just go straight and start praying the work of an evangelist. But he said, that, he said to them something profound. He said, Go and wait for me to listen until the Spirit. He poured from one hand upon him. And if Jesus thought it was important for them to have the Holy Spirit to do the work of ministry, then we must not think otherwise. I'll put it this way there is no work a man can do for God without the Holy Spirit. If you want to be effective, and this is why we left this subject for the last, the most effective strategy for evangelism. Is to do with the Spirit of God. God said, Jesus said, Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send the grass into the field. He was praying to the Father God as the Lord of the harvest. And if the Father and the Spirit of Christ are one and the same, then the Spirit of God is the Lord of the harvest going to do the harvest with you. Who best to harvest the field than the Father that planted the seed? No wonder, after the apostles received the Holy Spirit, guess what? They began to save many multitudes. 3,000, 5,000, then the city, then nations, and all the nations of the world today have heard about the name of Jesus because 12 men with them and they received the power of the Holy Spirit. 
for us to be effective in the work of the ministry, we must, we must, we must rely on the power of the Holy Ghost. We must rely on the power of the Holy Ghost. A good picture, a good picture of the church and what I just described about the apostles and their ability to carry the evangelical work so far is what happened in Judges chapter 15. We don't need to go there yet. Judges chapter 15, Samson was promised a wife. He went to court a goat, put it on his shoulder and came to receive his wife. When he came, the father in law had given the wife to his best man. Who is your best man? <laughs> he had given his wife, his wife to his best man. I said, well, my younger sister is there. Samson was annoyed. You know what Samson did? Samson took 300 oxes, oxes, tied their two tails two by two, lit the tails of fire, and faced them towards the farm of the Philistines. You know, just like the government own property. And the 300 oxes raised the entire farm. Because the fire was burning their tails, they were running for help, and they were just moving everywhere, and they consumed the entire farm. And the Philistines came and said, Who did this? And they said, It was Samson. That story is a metaphorical picture of a man who has received the Holy Ghost. He's ignited with fire so that when he runs, wherever he comes in contact with, he consumes with the fire. And the field is the field that we go out to harvest. Yes, Jesus, for John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he that is coming after me is greater than I. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost is discovered by fire for a reason. Anything in God touches the consumed. Yes, That's why the song is so marvelous. From the love to be perfect, till we become more like. It's a cry of a man's heart for the Holy Spirit to consume him. It's the reason I love this song so much. The songwriter says, Oh, oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. It is necessary for the one in Christ to be on fire. To receive the Holy Ghost as to about the ministry of evangelism. That's why it is so called evangelism on fire. It is the work of the ministry done in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And over, you know, the course of this month, we have been learning about the necessity of evangelism, and you know, one of the things we understood was. That when we go out to evangelize, when we go out to talk to people, or when we talk to people about Jesus and they do not accept, there is a reason. It is not beyond their, it is beyond their personal ability. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 4, that the God, he says, but if our gospel be, it is he to them that are lost. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed them not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So there is no problem with the message. The problem is the heart of men. The thing you must bear in your mind is this that we go out to interact with spirits. It's not to sound spooky or to scare you, but we are talking to people. We are not just talking to ordinary men, we are talking to spirits. And the man will respond to you based on the spirit that is influencing him. Either the spirit of light or the spirit of darkness. And this is the reason why you need a higher power. So that you will bring that spirit that is not only that one under subjection. Is that true? Yes, sir. Yes. This is why. This is why the Holy Spirit, the nation of the Holy Spirit, is so important. So important. And I'll run quickly because this one is brief. And then we'll move on. I'll share five reasons amongst many why the ministry of the Holy Spirit is important or why we must do a battle to see my father. Tell anyone don't do a battle to see yourself. I mean, yeah, you don't do a battle to see yourself. Do a battle to see my father, the Holy Ghost. Come on, let me hear you. Do evangelism by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Do evangelism by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. But I bet you are in the end of glory to the Holy Spirit. There's room for you to visit. It's not difficult, but that's not what we're talking about now. So, this 
sitting in your house saying, well, how can I do this fast I have not received the Holy Ghost. This thing you are saying is strange to me. You know, some people have pictured, I think when she was giving the prayer, I mean, she said something about how when things are said, we categorize certain people. Once we just talk about fire, we already imagine the brother or sister that have it. Whereas every man that fits inside that profile, let's just address it to John chapter 2, verse 28. John chapter 2, verse 28. John chapter 2, verse 28. It was a prophecy of John, and Peter reiterated this same prophecy in Acts chapter 2. 17. And he says, And it shall come to pass after all that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. You know, when people read this, they say, dreaming dreams is for old men, and saying this is for young men. No, the writer was just being poetic. The message here is this, that whether, whatever class you belong to, the Spirit of God is for you. Yes, whether you are old or young, yes. whether you are rich or poor, he said, can't be in a servant. Whether you have a family or not, as long as you throw bread, the Spirit of God that was promised is for everyone. And if you have not received it, there's promise waiting for you.
So the smallest we gather them. I read the story of Archbishop Blessing, the Davosa of Blessing Memory. I love him. I love him. Lord, I love him. I love him. That you go to the market sometimes and just see some other people and meet the person up. When the person starts for everybody is rejoicing. You know, then you just put two drums down and begin to preach. This Jesus, this thing you have seen, it is Jesus that did it. If you believe him, you will see greater wonders. Do you get it? That's a big job. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. When the people wonder, what is this thing? Peter said, this thing is a prophecy. Is that true? Yes. And when he finished speaking, he said, believe and see. The end of the power of the Spirit is the salvation of souls. But it's important because men will believe by what they see. It is when you come in Christ that you walk by faith that you, of the things you do not see. But men want to see signs. This is why the power of the Holy Ghost is important to go out of the world. Just imagine what you are evangelizing to someone. You just give them one word. You can't. You know how that is? Just like someone. You, um, it's your name is. How do you know? Oh, it's the Spirit of God. And then that's the it makes it easier. I bet you it comes selling an idea to you. Praise God. Amen. We must embrace the Holy Spirit. Say this after the precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. I embrace your ministry. I embrace your ministry. In my life. In my life. I will recommend this now. Go to our website, listen to the Governor of the Kingdom. Go and listen to that message again. You understand what I'm saying? Better. One last text that goes to the next one. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. Starts to tell us the strategy. And the people with one and all gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he wrought. So he came and was doing great signs and wonders, and because of that, he believed. Let me tell you something God is interested in you. Tell your neighbor, God is interested in doing great miracles. He just gave this in my heart to tell you because you know, it's, it's, it's very necessary. You know, when you observe the children of Israel, my wife and I were doing two Bible study, and, when, and we came to this conclusion. When you observe the, the children of Israel, you'll be watching one of these two rebellions. After they saw the power of God, Peter, don't you think about it? Let me tell you why. I know some of you have thought about it, but some of you may have never thought about it. It's the same reason why when Pharaoh saw Moses, he was nothing. Because there was magic in it. So they thought that God was just showing, there was another God that was showing magic. Do you get it? For 400 years, they in the land. Come on, have you ever thought about it that way? That is from Israel. They were not part of They were not moved. Pharaoh was not moved. When, what did Pharaoh do when those is true? He said, ah, God, boys, what is God that? We do, we do these things. Do you get it? So the children of Israel were probably used to see magic. So when they saw God, they just saw another God that shows magic. Do you get it? That's why they were stuck on. But then he exceeded. This is the reason why God had a problem with them. He exceeded. If you go back and read Exodus, whenever God spoke about the miracles, he made it in reference to Egypt. Because what they are seeing in Egypt cannot be compared to what he did. So that nation you saw three great magic, he came and suppressed them. I, I don't know what I'm saying. So God wants to work miracles. They are important. Glory to God. Number two, men will repent when they are convicted. Men will repent when they are convicted. Men will repent when they are convicted. And let me put it, let me make this clearer for someone who didn't get it from just that statement. Listen. Okay, let's read the text. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Something happened. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. After Peter had received the Holy Ghost, he began to preach. Pierre testimony of Jesus. Then the testimony said of this text, after I had finished preaching, says, Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they had heard this, they were preaching their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter now said, verse 38, Repent. Is that true? They were preached in their hearts. 
by what he said. Why were they preached? What I said in the beginning. A higher power, the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, the words that I speak, John 6, 63, are what? A spirit and they are life. The Bible tells us that if that spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, it will do what? It will quicken the mortal body. So when a man full of the spirit is witnessing to an a dead man, this words he's speaking are spirit and life, they are quickening his deadness to respond. I've told you before that salvation is not doing a new turn. Today, I do a new turn. I stop my bad days. They are good people, but they will tell you the glory to Christ. Glory to God. Salvation is a miracle of the dead coming back to life. So in Christ you have received life. So there has to be a quickening by the Holy Spirit. A quickening. And you know what? So some people take some time to persuade them. So the Spirit of God quickens. Quickens. He quickens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It brings to life what is dead. Everything the Holy Ghost comes in contact with comes alive, even the heart of a man. Suddenly you are talking to somebody, the person starts to feel, you know, how many comes to with some people yesterday. And I told them, I said, listen. I said, one of the reasons some kinds of people, when they come here, they don't want to stay long, is because your, your spirit is already a testimony against the earth. You know, there is no spirit. Should I be as, a, as you are spirit, you are living in the body, is that true? Yes. And so is every other person, whether they belong or not. Your own spirit is just regenerated. So in the level of the spirit, there is no distance. They don't see. Let me go back a bit. Has it ever happened to you that someone was looking at you? And you felt that someone was looking at you? Yes. Then you thought that someone was looking at you? Yes. But you were not facing the person. You know what happened? Your spirit is alive. Your spirit does not have eyes like just eyes in this way. It can sense anything. Is that true? Yes, sir. So, when an unrighteous man comes to a man that is righteous, the spirits are already interacting. So, that's why people run from people that are going It's not because they say it's a brother. The person's spirit is rebelling against the other spirit. Do you get it? Yes. So, a man in Christ who is righteous. Is already condemning somebody that is not righteous without even speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's the power of the Holy Ghost. So men must be convicted of sin before they receive. They receive the gospel. Men must be convicted of sin before they receive the gospel. Do you know that even the apostles themselves did not understand? Understand what Jesus was saying to them before they received the Holy Ghost. Even upon the resurrection of Jesus, the apostles were still asking, So is it now that you were established? Because everybody was waiting for his dominion. They were fighting. They said, No, I'm greater. Even though they are not greater as me, we are greater and greater man. John said, He's the one that Jesus loves the most. And when Jesus was ready, they asked him, so is it now that you are going to? Because what they thought was Jesus was the Messiah as in Peter of him. <laughs> That's what they thought. They thought that Jesus just to come down, chase all the enemies of Israel and establish himself as king. So that they too will have their official offices, governors of different tickets. That was their expectation. So when Jesus was resurrected, he said, no, it's time. So they ask him, is it now? He says, not for you to know. So they didn't understand anything. And this is why. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. He says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man Receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto me. Neither can he know them, because they are what? Come on, really, because they are what? It's telling you that the things of God are not comprehended with a man's mind. But you need the Holy Spirit to make you understand the things of God. There's a reason why I taught you before. I think sometime last week. I said, if you want to study your Bible and receive the life of Scripture, 
You must pray. If you just open your Bible to read, you will read the story. It will be story for you. Story, story, story. Once upon a time, like that. That's what the Bible will become to you. But when you pray, and immediately you pray, you read the scripture. And then the scripture will speak to you. In my early morning, when I just received the life of Christ, I, I, I started hearing, I started listening to different servants of God, but particularly this of very poor. And now I wonder why he used to say this. He would say, and the Lord said to me, that you go to scripture as a all of us are not reading the same Bible. What do you mean that this? That's what the Bible said. Until I have another experience too. The first call I asked, the first before God called me to ministry, as I was born again, but before He called me to, it was the text. It talks, I don't know how to explain it. It's as if the text was elevated from the Bible. Water. 
You might not be one that will read the others. Another person that will come to read will read the others. So you that keep telling them no reading, you miss what we session. Because you may not be one that will read the others, but of what you want have. Is that true? Some of you that are surprised who um, later than other people, you know, some of you are born inside this time of it. As a wedding paper to this boy, this boy is used to clean you from this hospital, like a pastor did. You know? But some people, you have to know Jesus. But there was nobody that kept disturbing you. Sometimes you go to church, when they do what I call your past, preaching, you want to stand up, it's not You know, it's not really what is it? You go. You go. One day, one brother, one brother just tells you, Do you know Jesus wants to start crying? People can't understand why you are crying. Your heart is already ready. Say, leave. Or oh, have you ever seen where someone comes and says, Please lead me to Christ? They were ready. And that's what happens. Glory to God. So he needs to be ready. Number four. Why the Holy Ghost is important? Why am I jealousy by fire? Because of divine ability. Say to your neighbor, divine ability. Divine ability. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. I want to read it, I want to quote it. Second Corinthians 3, 5. The Bible says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our sufficiencies of God. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter in it, but the Spirit given life. Thank God, my dear. Let me just use the privilege to say about this. Glory to God. I remember one time I went for an interview. And before the interview, people were arguing in the hall, in the waiting room. They were arguing. One brother he was shouting about, he was doing this step. That he, because someone was talking, trying to explain scripture. He now says, I leave that to you. He let that kill it. The spirit that gives life. So people say it to me that you don't read the word. Just focus on the Holy Ghost. That's nonsense. The letter here is the law. The law killed. When the law came, people said it was dying. But it says when Christ came and the Spirit was released, what was happening? People were receiving life. Read the whole context. So it says the letter killed. It's the Spirit that gives life. The law. So it says what? Well, this is the emphasis. We are the ministers of what? New Testament. That means there was no comparison between what? The old and what? The new. That's why I was this. I just want to explain that. So that you don't make you think that the Bible is wrong. If you don't read the Bible, you are wrong. Glory to God. The letter that he has here is the law. But then our main focus is says we are able ministers. Not minister as in pastor, able ministers. What we do is minister, we tell, we give, we give. As a minister, we can I give you information, I give you revelation, and impart you. So when you are preaching, you must be like what? Minister. It's not for those that are up to stage. Every man in Christ is a what? Minister. So say this after me, I'm an able minister. I'm an able minister. The Spirit of God empowers you. Things like offerings. Everyone say offerings. Boldness. Say wisdom. So when you go to talk, you know, some of you say you are sad. When you pray in the spirit, you know it gives you utterance. Utterance is not words to speak. Don't get me wrong. Utterance is the grace to speak. Let me tell you what utterance. Let me differentiate it. Anybody can stand here and hold his mind and talk. That's not utterance. Ridiculous. Utterance is what I'm doing now. As I'm talking to you, the word is entering your heart. Is the Spirit of God saturating the words that I'm speaking, making it not to sound normal? Because you can just come and say what I'm saying, isn't it? But all trust is different. Glory to God. Yeah. yeah. The, the most common places you see all trust is with men of God. So when you person standing on the stage, you say, you say something like this. I will. One of the most pronounced Catholic correct notes, for example, Apostle Rocco, is that. How many of you know Apostle Rocco? No, my God. Okay, let me just run into it. How many of you know Apostle Selma? You know Apostle Selma? You like how he talks at me? That's not trans. That's something that is simple. This boy 
is fine. When he says it, you say, Shut <laughs> Continue to respond to God. Does that make 
conversation with Mr. Bar Minister Barun, and he was telling me about how even against his will, sometimes he's not saying that he doesn't want to pray. That even against his will, when he has walked, let me give you more of this. There is something that he has pray. Then even when he has walked overnight, when he starts on the morning prayers by six, whether he likes it or not, I just go. Even if he closes, he slept by four or five. Oh, that time, two hours into his sleep, you are then two rest. He said, March is six, you don't open his eyes. And I was laughing, I said, You better go. I will close my eyes sometimes at 2 o'clock. I will open it at 5 o'clock. I will just be mad. I said, Today, I said, I want to let somebody, I will participate. I said, I want to let the crowd participate. It's because your mind has been trained to be that way. So in the moment you stop, he said, You stop because you are feeling a certain way. You have disrupted the process. Your mind just takes it as a new way. So the next time I want to pray, there's no motivation. And if you build your prayer life on motivation, you will only pray when there is a stirring. Yes. So that's why I said that you need to pray to maintain strength. When you don't, that's why we tell you to make plans. You have a prayer life. You know that's the time to pray. Whether you like it or not. So you build it, you come, you pray, pray. And the Spirit of God will help you. But the Holy Ghost is the one that keeps the fire burning. Haven't you ever wondered? Some people have been doing ministry for 60 years. So, like the um, um, Pastor Kumi, Dr. Kumi, 60 years, 60 years. People see most of us, they get tired for doing one thing 35 years. Let's not do it one again. 60 years. And you know, the person is doing it more effectively than the other people. <laughs> it's not because of see, just ah, I want to do the work of God. There is a quickening by the Spirit. So you must watch it. So this is one I put you out of the motion. This is well. If I don't, I will stop on the way. I will stop on the way. So the strength will continue. Even the work of the matter, because sometimes, you know, when you go, that's what's going to one, two, three people, nobody's responding. You will quit. Tell anybody who quit. If you go, go down to it. He's the only person that will tap you and say, just continue. I love the Holy Spirit. He's a motivator. You know, as a pastor, there are some people just say, I want to stop praying for this person. I just, let me not leave this person from the other. And when you start praying, you start praying the person to your mind. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Because you are looking at me, this man is a bad man. You know, you know how so far. I'll be praying for people. When they pray for you, pray for them. They feel that God, they feel that God brings from here. It's the people you pray for. Now I'll show you the city. Say, what, say, what have you done for me? Ah! Hey! Glory to God. But it's the only one that gives you strength to continue. To continue. Even when you don't see it, you continue. The Holy Ghost is the best motivator. The best motivation. The greatest inspiration. So if you want to run and not be tired, can I say something? For some of you, you might only feel you weak. You say, Oh, I'm at that point in my life where Pastor Oya said doesn't make sense. And I don't know for any motivation. Listen, like Black that TV was saying, help me. Don't be proud. Say, Father, help me. You think he's not interested in helping you? Like Jesus, the angels will come. What do you mean? What do you think he meant that the angels came and strengthened him? He didn't want to go. His flesh didn't want to go to the cross. Do you know what he needs to know what they will do to him? Just imagine, God forbid, you knew that if you step out of this building, there will be a mom action on you. You knew. That's what I've seen it before. It's not that you have seen how they beat people to death and burn them. You know that that's what's going to happen if you step out. Will you step out? See, the anointing will move you. Your flesh will hold the anointing. That's why you are more powerful in the flesh than the only good for the world. Because you will need to you to participate. And that's what was happening. Jesus knew what was coming. He knew it. He had felt it. Don't think he was crying blood because of his cry for blood was high blood pressure. He tears the um, um what's that? Um I'm a child of sister, something like that. He said, I am telling you now, doctor. Something like that. Yeah? It's a bounty term. His tissue for you know, made his skin oil elastic. The whole pulse is skin oil, his blood cells were 
breaking and blood was coming out because of the palpitation of his heart. So he was having serial series of heart attack at the same and cardiac arrest at the same time. He will have it and have it and have it because of fear. <laughs> so you are not the first person, glory to God, but you need help. That's what he's called your comforter. He's not here to make you stop crying when the boyfriend needs you. That's not what he's there for. He's here to strengthen you so that when you are lost in fear, he will quicken you again. He will touch you again. He says, Go in there. And then he just needs to come and put his hand on your shoulder and you stand on him. I shared with you a number of times. Start you. I remember one of the camp meetings, before the camp meeting. Including the emotional damage that we have gone through. Was that I struggled. Hallelujah. It's not pride, I'm mostly in Jesus. I struggle. I struggle. We struggle. Sorry, baby. We struggle. But I was still making flesh. I'm not like I said, I think I, let me just read here. Yeah. While I was praying, the angel of God just touched me. And I still was a father. I just woke up from sleep. I know interesting thing. Yes, I woke up, but it's so fascinating. For those of you that are not married, well, you know me yet. Why? I knew that was happening. My wife came and said, when she came out and saw me pray, no, she saw She saw an angel talk to me. And I laughed. Yes, I'm going to respond then. So when you feel like giving up, just say, Father, help me. You don't have a high risk that is not tossed by the penalty. In every way, he was tempted and he did fall. So he knows. He knows. Glory to God. What's going on? He knows. The high high is that knows. In conclusion, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. I'll read this text and then we will pray. And you will come to the Holy Ghost in this place and you want to. While we pray, just step forward. It's as simple as just laying hands on you. And that's all. After this, I looked and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne. And before the Lamb, they were robed in white with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the Lamb, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. This is a revelation, a prophecy about the end of days. So what was the person who tell you? What was the person who tell you that they had a vision? They saw plenty of people go inside here. Then after one hour, one person was going to heaven. <laughs> the Bible says there were multitudes from different languages, tribes, nations, that you could not count. Are you trying to say that God, you dealt with the most successful time of God? That's what you are saying. That all the sacrifice you made, all the investment, then you dealt with the most successful. I taught you about, when I taught you about the um, chapter of heaven, is that true? Now, go and listen to it. The last time, what was it like? The appearance. Is that the right? Okay, the last one, the appearance. We did a little eschatology, study of the end time. We were plenty. Yes, sir. Plenty. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes. Remember that one? The level thought he was guiding people. Jesus descended into heaven. Jesus descended into heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he, he left captivity captive. Yes, I'm not saying people don't go to heaven. They will go. Because people will reject the gospel. I'm just saying. I don't think that we will have plenty. I will see you there. Yes, so, I will see you there. Yes, no way. Tell your neighbor, I will see you there. I will see you there. Yes. I might not want to see that your neighbor there. I'm telling you what you will see out there now. Yes. I'll see you there. I'll tell you, you must be there. All this preaching, you must be there. 
you born today. Yes. I will look for you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes. There's no marriage in heaven, but we know. That's why we know Paul, we know Mary, we know Abraham. We know Pastor Faith. Yeah, Pastor Faith.
do things by faith. Amen. You will experience things that you have never experienced before. Amen. Help you have never seen before. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I speak prophetically that the angels are released to make the work of others unique indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When you look back at the world that you move mountains, others will be that mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When you look back at the time when you were ushered into a new season, others will be that time in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you begin to see your backward prophecy began to find expression. Amen. Others will be that mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to lift up your hands and say this after me. Father. Father. I step into a new month. I step into a new season. I step into a new season. I step into a new experience. I step into a new experience. A new experience with your power. A new experience with your power. A new experience with the Holy Ghost. A new experience with the Holy Ghost. A new experience in prophecy. A new experience in prophecy. A new experience in destiny. A new experience in destiny. And it will be not by might. It will be not by might. It will not be by might. It will not be by power. It will not be by power.
Just speak to it first. Father, I thank you for the privilege of me. Receive this of me as my come as part of my concentration to you. Let your hands be lifted up. Father, I thank you for every hand that is lifted up. I pray that no man shall drop down the lack, but shall continue to abound in plenty unto every good work to the glory of your name. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Which is God's love, please cast your offerings out in the
so that they will be added to a PC after the service. Please now, can I see your hands up? If you don't belong to a PC. Yes, thank you. Some people are raising half hand, but we accept it, thank you. Please, if you have testimonies, you can send your mail to testimony at tribulationchurch.org and then your testimonies will be read out on Sunday mornings like this. And this is a call to join service units, especially the setup team. We have many, we have hospitality, we have Karima, which is a choir, we have the ushering, we have the media. Who is another head? The body of the Oh, so Charles uh, is on that media. Yeah, Hallelujah. So please, if you want to join the service unit, you can meet Minister Pide. She's standing at the back after the service, and you tell how many service units you want to be a part of. All right. So on the sixth of August, which is a Saturday, this coming Saturday, we're going to be having a workers meeting by nine a.m. at our venue in Daniel Kwa. All workers know our venue. So our venue at Daniel Kwa by nine a.m. on the sixth of August which is a Saturday morning, and it is compulsory for every worker, so please, as is our custom, be seated at least 10 minutes to that time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, which is the 3rd of August, which is this Wednesday, we're going to be having our Wednesday service here at Emerald Resort. <laughs> Jesus, joy in your heart. I want you to 